September 11th happened my freshman year at the Naval Academy um, and that obviously shaped a lot of what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to go out and offensively find the enemy and based on certain things that were available to me I decided I want to fly attack helicopters and wanted to fly the AH-1 Whiskey Super Cobra and was blessed enough as I worked my way up to first get a commission in the Marine Corps. Uh, just a minority of the Naval Academy midshipmen get a commission in the Marine Corps and then to earn a flight slot and then from there to earn an opportunity to fly, live my dream, lived in California, flew the Super Cobra and was able to go to combat amongst some of the most professional and accomplished men and women that I've ever met. I believe it was third grade, Mrs. Diekman. Um, I had to do a book report. Both my parents were amazing inspirations in my life, but my, my mom sometimes, you know, put strong women, especially in literature, um, in her lap to read. And um, Clara Barton was a book report that I did for class. And, you know, here's this woman in the Civil War. She was on the battlefield. She was helping the wounded. And it was just, it excited my sense of adventure, but also the sense of purpose. And her purpose was to care for Americans. And in the Civil War, those were the only people on the battlefield were Americans. One of the most uh, rewarding mission sets that we flew as attack helicopters was armed escort for medevac helicopters. The medevac helicopters um, we flew primarily for were dust off. They were the army helicopters with the big red cross on the side. They weren't allowed to take their own door guns into the firefight to keep themselves safe, so that was our job. You can think of us kind of like armed bodyguards and we would go into a hot landing zone and we would make sure that it was as safe as possible. They would come in and with their spines of steel go into that hot landing zone uh, without any guns on and pick up whoever the casualty was on the ground, be they Americans, allied Afghans, um, the Brits were there and even at times the enemy when they were wounded and we had to evacuate them. About a year and a half ago, I co-founded an organization called No Exceptions. It's a nonpartisan initiative advocating for the full integration of all of the combat specialties in the military. Right now, the reality is that there are some specialties that are close to women. And I think as well as my co-founders believes that you're limiting a talent pool and there are a lot of young women out there that we're not using at the pointiest tip of the spear because for no other reason other than the fact that they're women um, it certainly isn't a women's rights issue. This is our national security is best served by utilizing all of the talent available to us and we need to recognize that talent in order to use it. And I think that No Exceptions really brings forward the concept of what can the individual contribute to the whole and we want to capitalize on all Americans out there who raise their right hand and are willing to fight for this country. The Red Cross is about service. The military is about service, protecting people. Um, there's obviously less of, more of a level of neutrality with the Red Cross necessarily than the military, but the ideas and the commitment behind it are really, there's so many similarities between the Red Cross and the military. It's the commitment to the mission and the commitment to really doing our best to better this world.